Welcome back to Henry's Garage. In this episode we work on the Triumph Stag. We do not take out the gearbox because we don't need to. Um, a really really good bleed of the system actually enabled us to change gears and then after driving for a little bit we couldn't again. Um, and we tried that a couple of times, same results. I've been looking for some sort of leak which I can't find. Um, so, and there are some noises which towards the end of this video I play for you to see if, um, see if anyone's got any ideas about what the issue might be. You might just tell me it is air and that I've got a leak somewhere and I just need to find it. Um, my current inclination is to try replacing the master, slave and connecting pipe and see if that sorts it. But um, before I do, I'd like everyone else's thoughts. So, thanks for watching. Enjoy the episode. Like, subscribe, comment, um, help if you can, and um, see you next time. Right, the plan was to turn this car around so the front is facing out, and then I can lift up that end with the back under that, the uh, workbench. The problem is we don't quite have enough space to get it turned around. So I think my only option might be actually to stick it in reverse and start it and drive it out bump 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 and turn it around and come back in so that would be starting it in reverse to get it out there starting it in first to move it a bit or maybe second and then in reverse again to get it back in I'm not happy with that really I have to be honest I need to think about this we're going to um, just do it at an angle which means the whole garage is taken up, which I hadn't really wanted. Well, let's get these under. So um, we've got chocks at the back so that it won't roll back on me. I put those under the wheels when I started jacking it, so that's how much it's crept forward. So we've got those at the back. And then I've got three stands under there. So one two and the yellow one at the back there so that's um two three ton and one two ton um i've given the car a good push and it seems safe so um at least i tried it side to side i haven't tried it front to back but uh, maybe i will but that's um that's how we're going to go about it and hopefully that will be high enough for me uh okay so anyone who has been watching me do my MG brakes knows how much trouble I have bleeding for whatever reason. Before I do this, I thought I'd just bleed it again. So I did a little video um, of pre bleeding, which I'll show you now. and a little video of post bleeding, which I'll show you now. And that looks better to me, the second one than the first. Um, by probably maybe a quarter to a half inch, I don't know. Um, certainly a centimetre better anyway. So um, if it's that much better, um, I want to test that I actually need to do anything here before I do. So I'm going to take it back down and go from there. Okay, I'm in the stag and we're in neutral. And I 
it's running and we're just going to try putting it together. If this works I might be too embarrassed to show it. Oh bugger me. Oh bugger me. Um, I'm going to have to beat that out but wow look at that. Well I know I make a lot of mistakes when, drive, um, when doing my car. Um, and normally I'm not embarrassed by it because, you know, I'm learning. But oh my god, what a mistake. Um, I am truly embarrassed um, this time. Um, delighted that it's running again and I don't have what has been stressing me all winter, but I could have been driving this um, and I haven't been. Anyway, I'm off for an hour now. I'm going to enjoy it. And um, I'll come back to you on the TR7 next time. As a bit of a footnote, I'm out driving and I've still got a problem with the um, clutch. Uh, I'm heading back now because, because of it. Um, I must have a slight air leak somewhere in the system because it's getting hard to change gear. But if I pump it, it will change and so I must have air getting into the system. I was heading home and um, the car just stalled on me. I was just there, pushed it to here and um, when I turn the key I get nothing. You can see the ignition comes on but when I turn the key there's nothing there. Oh. Well, I'm not quite sure how, but I did get it home. Um, I couldn't come out of third gear for the last five miles, uh, four miles. Didn't dare change. Um, and third gives me enough flexibility as long as I time lights and things right to be okay. So we got it home. We just about got it in the garage, pushed it last bit. And um, I think tomorrow we'll be having another look at bleeding that and tightening up some of those connections to see if we can sort it out. So um started refusing to change gear on me yesterday. As you can see this is still full. Yeah, you can see the fluid there. So it's holding it there. What just gets to me is that this goes down the whole way. It's you know there's no loop up or anything. And still managing to have a problem. Anyway, um, I'm going to see if I can find somewhere where it's leaking. Um, and go from there. Uh, before I check for leaks, I'm going to see what the movement's like now. Right, I've gone around, I can't find anywhere where there's a leak. It all feels pretty good, so... Um, so that's a bit worrying. Um, so underneath, I've tried... I can push the... You know, I can manually push the slave cylinder piston in a bit. Um, which I'm guessing pushes this up a bit. So it's pushing it out quite well. I just, um, maybe it's the master needs replacing. I'm going to bleed it again now and we'll see how it goes. Right, so I've bled it again. Let's get this into view. And the one thing I found that could have used a bit of tightening was this. Okay, so I got maybe another quarter turn out of it worry about over tightening but that's that's in so this is all tightened up it changes gear nicely up there now so 
I'm going to take it down, take it for a run and see how it holds out. Okay, so we've done a short test drive, not as long as yesterday. It seems to be okay. I think I'll take it out on a couple more short ones to um, make sure I'm happy with it. Um, but with that in mind, I think I'm good to close off this episode. And tomorrow we will get started on the TR7 again. I have ordered some heli coils for the engine. Right, I'm going to try bleeding the system again. I'm actually a bit less embarrassed about this now than I was before because, you know, every time I drive it, something's, it's, it's deteriorating and I'm not finding a leak in the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bleed it again. I'm going to film it whilst it's, the air is coming out to see if we actually see any air bubbles go. And I'll do that on slow-mo maybe. And um, we'll see. Um, and having done that, I'm then going to try to work out if actually we've got fluid escaping the piston or something like that. Because I'm not seeing it through any of the connectors or joints or anything like that. So um, I'll get you down below so we can see if we can see any air coming through. Right, I'm just about, I'll tell you when, I'm going to connect up the air to push this through. Oh, I need to undo this as well. So there might have been a bit of air right at the beginning there, but there's been nothing since. So I think that was telling me that if there is air, it's right down at the piston. And that might mean that we've got air coming in somehow down here. I've just played a little bit of video, or about to play a little bit of video, hopefully, um, where you can hear the clutch whining. As I touch the pedal, or even when I don't. So I had moved this pin here down to this bottom one. And with it there, there's more pressure on the clutch, clearly. And so I'm getting that whining. I don't know if that tells me anything, apart from it's better off here, um, up at the top one. But So I've moved it back. Um, but, you know, I always thought that whining was the clutch slipping. Which is why I've been, um, part of the reason I've been worrying about this. Still, it doesn't seem to be the issue for right now, so... Um, still playing around with this and seeing if I can find anywhere where it appears to be leaking from. Um, but it kind of overflowed at the top and so it's dripping and so it's hard to tell at the moment. I'm just trying to pick up that noise. 
can see. Someone can help me with what it is. Right, so I think this is about the third time I'm stopping this video. Um, I really can't work out what's wrong here. I think um, if anyone's got ideas about what the cause is, but you know, I bleed it, it works, and then um, you know, after driving for a little bit or just playing with the clutch a bit, it um, completely can't go. There's a couple of noises coming from there and I'm wondering if they're the cause. Um, you know, I don't know if, uh, but I don't know. So if anyone's got any ideas, because um, I'm, I don't know, but clearly, you know, if it's bl bled really, really well, initially it's okay, and then it goes. But I can't find a leak, and the reservoir still looks full. But you might tell me, no, it's definitely a leak somewhere. Um, in which case, fine. Um, my current inclination is to just try replacing the whole master slave and connecting pipe and see how we go from there. Um, I can't think of what else to do. So if you've got any thoughts, greatly appreciate it.